All right, so I just wanted to make a, uh, a little video here to try to help you guys with um, the law of exponents problem and the homework if you're having trouble with it. Um, so I'm going to work these two examples, and I, and I hope it helps you. Um, the basic idea is just to use the laws of exponents. You know, x, y to the t is x to the t, y to the t, or x to the s to the t is x to the st, or if we've got a negative exponent, we can rewrite it as a positive exponent in the denominator. If we've got a negative no exponent in the denominator, we can rewrite it as a positive exponent in the numerator. These are, these are the, the tools of the trade here, primarily. And, um, of course, this uh, equally well applies to, um, you know, square roots. So, like, let's see here. What else can I say? Um, you know, if I have square root of x, y, it's like square root of x times square root of y. And the same for the nth root. If I had like a 3 or something else, it would still work the same. Um, okay, so, and, and also just generally speaking, if we want to think, if we want to convert from radical notation to exponent notation, this is going to be handy, the 1 over n. Okay, so we're, we're going to need to use that over here pretty shortly. So my first move is just to copy the expression down again so I have something to work with. And then I'm going to start making steps. So my first step was to take x cubed y quantity squared and rewrite it as x cubed squared times y squared, right? So just to make sure you understand which part of it I'm unwrapping, I just modified this piece to this piece, right? The y to the fourth just wrote along. And also upstairs, I had the square root of, um, you know, this times that, and I rewrote it as the square root of x squared times the square root of the square root of x, y. All right. Now, at this point, it's going to be convenient for us to sort of, um, in the numerator, switch over to um, the uh, fractional notation. So that's really x squared to the one-half power, and... This is xy to the one-half power. That's the inside part. And then squared it again to the one-half power again. Now downstairs, we have x to the 3 times 2, which is 6, y squared, and y to the fourth. All right. Now, what, what next? OK, so let's 2 times 1 half is just x. Um, and this would be one half times one half is what? It's one fourth. And let's see here, downstairs we can clean that up. That's x to the sixth times y to the two plus four, which is six. Right? Now that gives me x. I'm, I mean, I could have simplified this x and that x to the sixth to give me an x to the fifth downstairs, but I didn't. I'll just do this, okay? I need to remember to go get some white out at Walmart. I haven't gotten around to it yet. All right. And now I can just collect everything together, right? I'll, I'll write x here. I've got x to the what? 1 plus 1 fourth. And I get a minus 6 from that one downstairs. And then I've got y to the 1 fourth minus 6, right? And so what does that give me? That gives me x to the, let's see here, 1 fourth, 1 minus 6 is minus 5. What's 1 fourth minus 5? So, let's see here. I usually like to write it on some scratch paper. I don't want to clutter my current presentation. Um, so I'll just, oh, fine, I'll just do it over on the side here. Uh, one fourth minus five, right? That's what this is. That is the same as one minus uh, 20. Let's see here, five times four over four is 20 over four. So I think, if I haven't made a mistake here, that's minus 19 over 4. So I've got minus 19 over 4. 
and then y to the, let's see here, I'll do my arithmetic scratch work over here. Of course, if you have a calculator handy, you can use it. I just, too lazy to go get it. Um, 1 minus 24 over 4. So it looks like the y exponent is minus 23 over 4. Now, some of the problems that you have in like the textbook or something will say simplify and write your answer with positive exponents. But you notice that's not the format here. The goal is to simplify until you have it in the form x to the a, y to the b. Now I have that, right? So I can take this and I can compare to x to the a, y to the b. And you can read off from that that a, in this case, is minus 19 over 4. And b is equal to minus 23 over 4. And there you go. That would be the answer for that part. Let me slide this up here for just a second so you can make sure you can see that. Okay. All right, now let me work the other one since there are no questions. <laughs> Sorry, eventually I'll get tired of that joke. Um, but not yet. All right. Let's see here, try to make sure it's in line. All right. Now, this one. So first step, I rewrite it to start myself out straight. Cube root of x, y, right, x, y to the minus 2, x. Now, technically speaking, of course, you could make a step when you copied it down if you want. I'm just trying to be careful. All right, so I got my x minus 3. I got my y squared. I can rewrite that as x, y to the 1 third power. I mean, I would say converting everything to fractional notation where you have roots is probably a good move because then you can use um, the exponent, exponent notation to simplify. Downstairs, we have x to the minus 2, y to the minus 2 by one of those laws of exponents that I have covered up here. Let me bring it back. Come on. Come on. Let me, come on. There you go. There you go. Aha. Um, so basically using this x, y to the t, but t is equal to minus 2. And then, of course, I got my x, right? All right, so what do I got? I've got x to the minus 3, y squared, x to the 1 third, y to the 1 third, um, x to the minus 2, y to the minus 2, x to the, well, x to the 1, right? And, um, okay, so let's look here. What do I have? So my goal is to write y in the numerator and x in the denominator, right? So I'm going to start by, with, I'm going to start with my y. I've got 2 plus 1 third. And then notice this y to the minus 2 downstairs, right? So when I bring that up, it becomes plus 2. That's it for y. Now x. I've got x. Downstairs, I've already got minus 2 plus 1, right? But I also have this x to the minus 3 and x to the 1 third. So when I bring x to the minus 3 to the denominator, that becomes x to the 3, which gives me plus 3. And when I bring this x to the power 1 third downstairs, it gives me minus 1 third, right? So, let's see if I can clean that up. So I have y to the 4 plus 1 third divided by x to the, what do we got, 4 minus 2. Anyway, the whole numbers work out to 2, and we got 2 minus 1 third. And so I could simplify those, right? But I'm just going to go ahead and compare that to y to the b 
over x to the a because my goal is to find a and b, right? So I can look at these, I can compare, I can say, aha, b is 4 plus 1 third, which I can simplify further, further in just a second here, and a is 2 minus 1 third, right? Of course, that's um, 12 plus 1 over 3, and this is, you know, 6 minus 1 over 3, right? So we've got 13 over 3, and we've got ourselves a 5 over 3. There you go. Um, that's how you work these kind of problems. You, 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 you simplify, simplify the expression until you've reached the desired format and then you can read off the exponents. That's, that's how you do these, one step at a time, and um, it's a pretty good measure of whether or not you understand laws of exponents. Um, it's not uncommon to get stuck on this problem. I have taught calculus many years, and I would estimate, in my, in, in my experience, probably 30 or 40 percent of the students that come at me um, in Calculus 1 at, at a school which had pretty similar um, entrance criteria to, to to West Alabama. Something like 30 or 40 percent of the students are struggling with this at the start of calculus. And um, you know, this is one of those um, areas of algebra that we have to get better at because we can't be successful in, in later math unless we can identify these manipulations. Like, you know, you need to you need to be pretty proficient at these kind of manipulations to be um, to have the best success in, in future math courses. Um, on the other hand, I will admit, for the purpose of the current course, like, there's a lot of other problems that don't really get into this, right? So, like, it's possible to, you know, completely uh, have a total dumpster fire of, of uh, thinking here and, and yet still be successful in a lot of the other, like, polynomial problems. But anyway, I hope this helps you. If not, uh, I'm sorry. I'll help again. Just ask a question and I'll try again.